uh, Stick to the Lie, which is a song you co-write with Andy Savers, is coming out as a single shortly. How will you promoting it? How will I promote it? Um, we have a few remixes for it. Uh, there's a guy, German guy called uh, Whistleback, who is sort of a new upcoming uh, DJ. And uh, we've sort of chosen to push his remix uh, quite hard because we like it. Um, apart from that, I'm going to do, you know, the regular stuff, like some press and nothing special really. Just. The music has to speak for itself, I guess. Of course. Have you ever been happy with the reception for Acopalypse uh, Pop? Every album seems to reach new audiences and here you connect with the body music crowd. Um, I think we've gradually, I think maybe by mistake, the first time we got booked to, uh, you know, um, the Gothic, uh, the, sorry, we got, we got booked to our first festival in, uh, EBM festival in Leipzig, mm. uh, or it's a goth festival, uh, but I think something happened there, we did a really good gig, I remember everything was completely chaotic in the beginning, and then we did the gig and everyone just went mad for it, and I think since then, Something happened in the uh, EBM scene. People seem to have discovered something in us that they like. And even though we're not pure like EBM music, there's um, something, you know, the, the darkness in the music. I guess the I don't know the, the beats. It's I, I kind of um, enjoy playing for for this type of crowd because they're so. Uh, enthusiastic and, and sort of into the like nerdy about the music and and loyal to the music and and uh, that's something I really can relate to if I'm happy with the uh, reception of Apocalypse Pop yeah I think so good how did you choose the collaborators for your last album mm. I think I, after Highway Poetry, I decided to use my, uh, you know, position as an artist to collaborate with a lot of people because there was a lot of people who, who wanted to work with me and uh, I was like, yes, okay, I'm gonna, you know, uh, pick some people that I really like. So I collaborated with quite a few people and then I, I really um, picked uh, based on, you know, the the end result really who I wanted to actually have on the album so again it's it was about the music I've never been good at making strategic moves like have someone famous on my record or trying to you know plan stuff like that it's always been about the music for me does having a studio in Jura influence your music mm, I think on the last album, the studio in Jura was still under development, so I I couldn't do as much as I wanted there then. I think it's going to be on the on the, the next step, and the, uh, the the new music is going to be a lot more influenced by that because I I did it partly in London and partly in my studio, the stuff that I couldn't do in my studio, but now I have better facilities you know so I'm gonna do even more there so I think it's gonna sound more and more Jura-ish uh, as we go along. Okay the addition of kind to your stage show was a great move how did you find her and what was it like for you and David to have another person on stage with you? Do you know it's uh, um, very, you know, refreshing part of our lives now. She's uh, she's really cool. She's, you know, when you play together, when me and David, we've been going for a long time, and you do stuff uh, that you've been doing, not really thinking so much over it. But she's good at seeing, like, okay, maybe we should do it like this, and and 
it's really fun to have more one more person on stage to sort of communicate with and have fun with. So that's great. She's super. Cheers. This summer you married uh, Ketil uh, Nernes uh, and toured the United States with his band, uh, Obert. Uh, you have also provided vocals for Obert recordings. Is this a dark noise rock side of you that needs to come out sometimes? Is there a dark noise rock side? Um, I play synthesizers uh, for them actually, and a little bit of vocals too. But I, I like Arab rock music, and um, it's very, it's very um, hard to tour with a noise rock band because they play shows every day and they go for like eight hours, and and it's it's really hardcore, much more hardcore than when we tour. Um, uh, but it's been it's been interesting because it's I've never played in someone else's band. I've always had my own band, and uh, I've always liked rock music as well. Um, so it's a little bit strange to play in someone else's band, but at the same time, I could feel even today that um, I'm learning a lot from playing in someone else's band, and uh, yeah, it's. Variety is good. Uh, is, that, is that the, an answer to your question? <laughs> yes, it's a good answer. <laughs> you just a guest. Hmm? You just a guest. Yeah. We've been covering efforts by Wynn to activate recognition in music collectively. Uh, Koso in no way is one such moment. Do you feel an affinity for those, these affinities? Initiative. What does that mean? Uh, do you feel that you're uh, a part that of that movement? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think. Are you any you? It's not bad. Um, I mean, I think they kind of make women visible in a way in music that they that that women aren't always visible as producers you know i produce my own music i i do a lot of things um that i think more women should do so yeah i think i i do feel i think you are thing. a big part of uh, promoting women in music because you do everything yourself and you are a Big influence in in electronic music. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And that's kind of a thing with my studio as well. Is that I want to create sort of a, a safe environment for women to come and 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 learn more about music production and hook themselves up to my system. And because I've never ever met a, a woman in a studio in my. 10 years of making music and I've been to a lot of studios but I've never ever met a woman but I've been I've met a lot of brilliant guys but I've also met some guys who think they can do everything better than me and don't want me to touch the knobs and I just want to break that ice a little bit for for women and I know Juno uh, she's a producer as well and she's in sort of in the same position so we're working on it good You've been making records for more than 10 years now. What is the lessons that you would pass on to new artists? Oh, God. I don't think I'm the right person to give anyone <laughs> any lesson. Um, well, a lesson to women in the music industry. Well, just keep going. Work really hard and don't forget to have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>